got some past exam questions here on transition elements so if you want to have a go at these the link to the questions is in the description of the video so play the video when you're ready for the answers okay so question one show the vanadium is both a d block element and transition element got to include full electron configuration of vanadium in zero and plus two oxidation states so starting with why it's in the d block because its highest energy electron is in a d subshell why it's a transition element because it can form at least one ion with an incomplete d subshell so zero oxidation state electron configuration is that you can put 4s before 3d if you want that's fine and the v2 plus electron configuration remember you have to lose the 4s electrons before you lose 3d so because it's 2 plus when you lose both of those okay so moving on to part two i haven't got any answers in yet because i think it would be better if i sort of complete it as i explain it so we've got to complete these two half equations and then come up with the overall redox reaction okay so the the vanadium one first the oxidation state of vanadium at the start is plus five and it's going to plus two so there's a change of three there's a reduction in oxidation number of three miss that means it must be gaining three electrons. So now we're going to balance the H pluses and with the way we do it is we want the charge on the left and the right to be the same. So you can see on the right at the moment the charge is 2 plus. The only thing that's got a charge is the V2 plus ion. So we need the left hand side to be 2 plus as well. Well at the moment it is 1 minus and 3 minus. So it's overall 4 minus. But we need it to be two plus so we need six h pluses and that'll take the charge on the left up to two plus and then the final thing we do is just balance the atoms now so we've got six h's so we need three h2o's and that sorts the oxygen out as well half equation two really straightforward we're going from zn which is in its zero oxidation state to plus two so obviously that's an increase of two in oxidation number so it's lost two electrons and then to combine the two, we need to get the electrons to cancel out. So if we multiply this one by two, multiply this one by three, that will give us six electrons in each half equation. They'll be on either side of the arrow. So when we add them together, they'll drop out of the equation. And that gives us that as our overall redox reaction. Part B now. So explain why platinum has no charge. Well, if we think about what it contains, it contains a PT, but it's a PT2+. Plus. It contains Cl2, so two chloride ions, so their charges will cancel each other out. The ammonia has no charge anyway, so uh, you didn't actually need to mention that. Next part of the question, two diagrams of cis and trans platins, what they're after. So the cis isomer is where the identical ligands are 90 degrees apart. So they're 90 degrees apart, they're 90 degrees apart. The nitrogen is what's bonded to the platinum. So just be careful, you make sure that it's the nitrogen directly bonded to the PT. Um, the trans isomer is where the identical ligands are 180 degrees apart. The bonding ligands donate electron pairs to the central PT2 plus ion forming data covalent or coordinate bonds. And then finally, part C, it's the cis isomer that binds to DNA of cancer cells and that prevents them from multiplying. Question two now, we've got to describe the reactions of aqueous copper two ions with aqueous sodium hydroxide and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Colours of copper containing species, ion equations and type of reactions taking place for both. Right, so we'll start off with the first one. Copper 2 plus aqueous, or to give it its complete formula, copper hexa aqua 2 plus. It's a blue solution. They react with sodium hydroxide forming a pale blue precipitate. You can give the simple precipitation reaction equation, or you can give the more complicated one. And the other reaction, aqueous copper 2 plus ions react with um, conch HCl to form a green slash yellow solution. I'll talk about the colours in a second, but either of those colours will be fine. There's the equation, and it's a ligand substitution reaction. 
Okay, so in terms of colour, remember this thing's blue. Pure copper um, tetrachloro 2 is actually yellow, but it often sort of exists in an equilibrium in this reaction. And so if you've got this blue species and this yellow species present in the same test tube, it can often look green. So they'll accept either of those. First part of question three, what's meant by a bidentate ligand? It's a ligand that donates two electron pairs to a central metal ion, forming two coordinate bonds or two of covalent bonds, you could say. Next part of the question, we've got to draw the two remaining 3D diagrams of the other stereoisomers of A. So the first one I've drawn is the mirror image of that, mirror image of this, which is this um, structure here. So that's the cis isomer. That's because if we compare this where the water ligands are, they're 90 degrees apart, so cis, and this is an optical isomer. So the mirror, it's a mirror image of that, and it's a non-superimposable mirror image. And the final one is when we take the water molecules or the ethane or dioid ion ligands and put them 180 degrees apart. So this is the trans isomer, and that's it. Empirical formula of complex ion A, including the charge, so it's that there. Four now, so which row shows the atomic structure of the MN552 plus ion? So we can see there, MN is for 25 protons, get that from the data sheet periodic table. So that leaves us with options A and B. Um, the neutrons are going to be 55 minus 25, so 30, so it's A. Which apparatus could be used to determine the effect of concentration of copper sulfate aqueous on the rate of the reaction? There's another reminder there that this is blue because it contains aqueous copper 2 plus ions. So they're blue and there's the reaction equation and you can see that this blue colour goes to a colourless solution because you form zinc sulfate. So you could use a colorimeter to measure the rate of that reaction. And finally, question six, which statement about X is true? Has it got optical isomers? No, because the mirror image of the ion is superimposable on that, so it's not optical. Has a square planar shape? No, it doesn't, it's tetrahedral. It's got the formula CuCl42+, no it doesn't. It's a two minus charge, because each of those chloride ions is one minus. So when you put that against the two plus, you're left with two minus. Has it got a yellow colour? Yes, it has. We've already mentioned that um, in a previous question. CuCl42- minus in its pure form is yellow, but it often looks green when it's uh, in with um, aqueous Cu2+. So D was the right answer.